Last night, DICE released a blog post about some of the first steps that they're going to be taking to try and improve Battlefield 2042 and make the gameplay experience better for everyone that's playing it. The first area that the development team will be tackling is map design, and there's five topics that they've identified around current problems that are being faced with gameplay that they now have proposed changes for and they want to get feedback on this stuff. The five areas that the development team want feedback on are traversal, intensity, line of sight, paths and cover and we're going to start off with traversal and this is something that i've seen a lot of people talk about since the launch of battlefield 2042 the amount of time that it can take from the moment you spawn in to you actually finding some action to get involved in it's a lot longer than previous games in the franchise and dice has identified that 128 players is likely the reason for that because the maps are that much bigger and the action is more spread out Dice has seen the feedback that lots of people think that 2042 is a walking simulator, which did really make me laugh when I read it. And it's nice to see them being as honest as they are about this feedback. And I think that that's actually a really accurate description of many different scenarios right now in Battlefield 2042. But what Dice is looking to do is reduce the overall travel time between flags and base spawn points on some of the maps by moving those spawn points and moving flags closer together. So it sounds as if they're making their large maps have a smaller overall play space on them. So the map will still be just as big as it was before, but the areas that you can access and the locations of the flags will be a bit closer together, so it actually feels like you can get into the action in a reasonable amount of time. Next up is intensity, and here again DICE is citing 128 players because they feel there are many peaks and troughs in the action. Sometimes there's so much action that you're being shot from almost every different angle, there are vehicles everywhere, and you can't really combat any of it because you die so insanely fast that you're just back in the spawn screen again. And then again, other times, if you look back to traversal, sometimes you spawn in and there's literally nothing going on around you because all of the action is like 500 meters away over by another flag and it's going to take you a few minutes to get over there. So DICE wants to try and change the way the intensity feels on the map so that instead of having these intense periods of absolute chaos and then loads of downtime, that there's a more even balance there. So sometimes it's a bit quieter, sometimes it's a bit more chaotic, but it's not so stark and it's not so binary. It's not on and off. You want it sort of bubbling away under the surface pretty much all the time. There is a mention in this section at the moment that DICE feels that the 64 player version of Breakthrough is actually more preferable than the 128 player version of Breakthrough, because this is one of the game modes where you get those insanely chaotic moments in a really small area of the map that gameplay just sort of breaks down and there's not really much you can do to try and influence the outcome of that battle. And that's something that DICE wants to try and eliminate, which was one of the reasons that they introduced the 64 player version of Breakthrough and Conquest just before Christmas, so that they could get some data and some feedback about what that experience was like. So again, it's very interesting to see that the team is almost admitting that their move to 128 players wasn't such a good move after all. Line of Sight is another area that DICE is looking to get feedback on with some of their proposed changes and what they're referring to here is the amount of times that you're shot at long range and there's really nothing you can do to combat it because there's no cover between you and that player that's shooting at you so the enemy basically gets a free kill. They've heard lots of feedback that there's too many open and flat spaces on the maps in Battlefield 2042 and apparently a lot of that feedback is aimed at certain areas on Kaleidoscope Although I can think of lots of different areas on other maps like Hourglass and Discarded where there are just huge open areas with absolutely no cover whatsoever. So if you've got feedback on that stuff, DICE is really looking for it. But the fact that they've acknowledged that these open spaces are there and that they need to do more, that, that's a good thing I guess. Pathing is another one, an area of focus that they're going for. Players not really understanding where the lanes are to move between objectives. They're not very clear. DICE has basically admitted they haven't done a good job here. It's not easy for you to make a move from flag to flag or from base to base on breakthrough because you have to expose yourself to enemy gunfire all the time. Again, there's not enough cover between you and where you want to go. All of these things kind of bleed together a little bit, but pathing is really, really important. On previous games, like let's take Battlefield 3, for example, Maps like uh, Sen Crossing or Grand Bazaar, these urban fighting locations with very distinct lanes about where you can go and where most of the traffic is going to be and where most of the fighting is going to be. It's pretty obvious what's going to happen in certain areas of the map and that leads to really interesting gunfights because you know where to go in order to get that action. In Battlefield 2042, 
That doesn't really exist. And you can be picked off at random by some person that's just sitting there waiting for someone to run out in the open again so they can get a cheap kill. So the fact that, they're, again, they're looking at pathing is a good thing. And lastly, probably the most important thing, I think, is cover. It's, limit it's similar to line of sight, according to DICE, but these large, flat, open areas, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, they've just got no cover in them whatsoever. And to me, it's completely baffling how this didn't come up during development. I mean, how do you look at the huge open area and know that infantry are going to be running through it and go, hmm, yeah, that looks right. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Previous Battlefield games have had large, open areas of maps, but... There's things littered around in those open spaces so the infantry and vehicles can use it as cover so they're not immediately sniped by somebody who's sitting on a roof, again, waiting to get a cheap kill from somewhere that you didn't expect. So the fact that DICE is looking at cover, again, a good step forward. Now, when can you actually expect these kind of changes to go live in Battlefield 2042? And just for reference, I've thrown up a couple of images here of the changes that DICE are looking to make to the Kaleidoscope map in general. According to the blog post, these proposed changes to Kaleidoscope are set to arrive during Season 1 of Battlefield 2042. And of course, we know that Season 1 has been delayed for an extremely long time. I think a lot of people thought Season 1 was going to launch just a few weeks after the launch of the game in November. That didn't happen. We had to wait all the way until the end of January, beginning of February to get an announcement that season one was being delayed all the way to early summer. So early summer is what, June. So we're still a good three or four months away from this kind of update actually arriving in Battlefield 2042. And the blog post also goes on to say that the feedback that they get here on the kaleidoscope changes once they're implemented will best inform us on where to focus on improving maps next. So basically, at the moment, they're using like Kaleidoscope as like a prototype because I think it's probably the worst map of the lot and they want to try and make significant changes to it. But they're making those changes first, then they'll get feedback and then they'll make changes to other maps. But the blog post reads like they're only working on Kaleidoscope and maybe they aren't working on other maps until they've implemented the Kaleidoscope changes and they're live in the game. That would be almost disastrous because... In my honest opinion, every single map currently available in Battlefield 2042 needs severe work to make it even remotely entertaining at this point in its game's life cycle. I think everybody can attest to these maps not really filling the void in the way that previous games have. These are not the best launch maps we've ever had for a Battlefield game, and I think they need a lot of work to improve the gameplay. If the team is only working on one map at this time, and then it's then going to wait to see the reaction to the work that they're doing before they start working on other maps, we could be waiting until the end of 2022, 2023, to see all of these map improvements added to the game. And quite frankly, that's just not a realistic timescale that's going to keep anyone interested whatsoever. I certainly won't be interested in playing Battlefield 2042 during that period of time when they're working away map by map over periods of months at a time in order to improve things. It's really unfortunate for me to say this, and I know that the current landscape makes it a bit more difficult to get this work done in a much more timely fashion, but this has got to be done quicker than the timescale it's being done at the moment. Otherwise, well, we've already seen the dwindling player numbers. I'm not sure anybody is really going to be around waiting for these map changes if they're arriving several months down the line into Season 1, when really most people at that point are thinking about the new content that that season is going to be bringing. And then what happens in Season 2, Season 3, Season 4? Those first four seasons that DICE has said they're going to be delivering in Year 1 of their Season Pass, those are going to follow on from Season 1. So what happens? Are we still going to be going through Season 4 and they're going to be updating the base maps alongside adding new ones? It's going to get really complicated and I think DICE needs to focus a lot more attention on getting some of these things solved very, very quickly. And I don't really know how they're going to do that because if it's going to take them this long to do Kaleidoscope, and if that's the manpower that they've got available, then maybe it will be taking that long to get all of these maps done. But I just don't think that that's a timescale that players are going to really respond to. If it's going to take months at a time to fix maps, people aren't really going to wait for that, I don't think. I hate being so downbeat about Battlefield because I really wanted to succeed. And I really did think that before the launch of this game with the marketing campaign and how confident DICE was in their own product, 
that they were going to deliver something really truly special that was going to go on from the days of Battlefield 4 and become their next big Battlefield game that exists for a long time into the future. But at this stage, I really cannot see that happening anymore. I think it's taken DICE too long since the launch of the game to admit that there are problems and start working on them. The game launched in an extremely buggy and messy state, which obviously annoyed the player base anyway, and you've still got this really negative crowd around the game, and the offers that are coming from the development team and, and from EA about what's coming next, these are not substantial enough to really get people excited. So I'm going to revert back to something that I said about a month ago in a previous video that I don't think DICE should really be, you know, updating the game in its current state and continuing to push out updates. I think they need to lock themselves down as a development team, really figure out what they want to do with Battlefield 2042, work on all of that stuff, and then relaunch it at some point in the future. A big No Man's Sky relaunch. We know how bad that game was at launch, but the team went away and they fixed it. They worked on their design and they produced something much better and they relaunched at a later date and everyone was much more satisfied with the product. That is exactly what DICE needs to do with Battlefield 2042. But at the moment, it doesn't look like that's what's happening with the DICE team. And goodness only knows what's going on in the background with EA, trying to understand what happened with this Battlefield game and where they want to go with the franchise in the future. I was saying before Battlefield 2042 launched that this game needed to be an absolute win for the franchise. And if anything, it's plunged the franchise even lower than what Battlefield 5 did, into the depths of where I don't see this franchise recovering if things continue in this state. And the reason I'm laughing when I say that is because, well, I'm a little bit nervous that that actually might happen. Battlefield is my favourite franchise by far to play as a video game, and I don't want to see it destroyed. But currently, the way it's being handled, I just don't see things improving along a timescale quick enough to make anybody happy with it. And so, I don't really know what's going to happen next. I'm hopeful things will get better, but I've really got absolutely no confidence that that's going to happen at this point.